Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and even GED match results uh, of a upper paleolithic man from Russia, from Vladimirskaya Oblast. This is where he's from. Uh, this region of Russia is actually very unique, very important to the foundation of the Russian culture and Russian ethnicity. It's uh, right next to Suzdal, it's right next to Vladimir, uh, it's right next to um, Muram, it's right next to Pereslav Zaleski, I think that's right here. So it's right next to the, all of the important um, cities that's, that are important for the foundation of the Russian ethnicity. However, this individual is anything but a Russian uh, in terms of his ethnicity, in terms of his genetics. This individual predates Russians by like 40,000 years old. So this individual is um, anything but a Russian. But he did live in Russia before uh, people like Russians emerged and people like Russians came into this location. So... What am I talking about? First of all, let's start with his haplogroup. His haplogroup is C. His Y DNA is C. This is a Y DNA that you will never find in a modern Russian. Uh, you just you're not gonna find it because it's so unusual. But most of these Cromanions had this Y DNA. Most of these Cromanions actually had Y DNA C. Uh, what about his ethnicity? Right? What what did he resemble ethnically? Uh, ethnically, he ironically resembled other inhabitants of Russia, such as Sarmatians. Uh, then there's Hispanics, then there's Yamne. But really, if you look at the two-way model for my ethnic calculator result, you, you will see that he's getting modeled as a mixture of South Asian plus North Germanic, uh, French plus South Asian. You will see there's some other, there's some other uh, interesting results here. Uh, there is North Italian plus South Asian. So clearly, this individual has a, has a South Asian shift relative to Europeans. He's getting modeled as a mixture of European plus South Asian. There's clearly... Uh, a South Asian shift that's present here. Now we're going to compare it with GED match, and with GED match we're going to start with. Uh, actually, we're going to. I'm, on, I'm only going to show you the Harappa world, uh, but this is what he scores with Harappa world. Notice how he's scoring five percent Papuan, which is a Andamanese component, and he's also scoring thirteen point eight percent South Indian. Both of these are extremely South Asian components to score, so he's got a lot of South Asian like admixture. Uh, and with the Oracle, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of <clears throat> white from Utah plus Andamanese. Andamanese, uh, Andamanese islands are islands uh, off the coast of South India. Uh, British plus Andamanese, Orcadian plus Andamanese. There's French plus Andamanese. There's French plus Ongi, which is also in the Andamanese islands. Uh, there's Slovenian plus Andamanese. So clearly, this individual has a lot of shift towards South India and South Eurasia that modern people in Russia don't have, that modern people in Europe in general don't really have. Um, let's go ahead and return to my trade predictor. And now we're going to go ahead and look at uh, his results for uh, phenotype. We're going to start with Nashakot. So it looks like for phenotype, what's he scoring? He's scoring darkest brown eyes. So he definitely has very dark brown eyes. But once again, there's a big distinction between this individual and modern Russians, right? Modern Russians... Uh, don't really have darkest brown eyes, right? It's very unusual for us to have this kind of an eye color. But this individual and every other Cro-Magnon from this location uh, had the same kind of phenotype, which is darkest brown eyes, uh, black hair, once again, uh, really unusual for modern inhabitants of this region. Uh, light brown skin, once again, really unusual for modern inhabitants of this uh, region. The odds of white or pale skin for him is absolutely zero. He definitely doesn't have those types of uh, skin colors for hair texture he's predicted to have kinky hair once again uh, this is very unusual for modern inhabitants of this region but for upper, peri upper paleolithic inhabitants of this region it's actually pretty typical so it looks like um, in Euro in, in the case of Europeans and East Asians and Eurasians in general over time our hair started out as being kinky and then it's sort of we, we sort of selected against that and we ended up with straighter or wavy or curly hair but not kinky hair, whereas our ancestors in the Upper Paleolithic were, for the, for the most part, kinky haired. Uh, when it comes to coloring related variants, it looks like he does not have blue eye haplotype 3, or blue eye haplotype 2, or blue eye haplotype 4. He does have heterozygous genotype for blue eye haplotype 1, which is very interesting. So it looks like the, uh, the derived variant here in blue eye haplotype 1 might have occurred. I think it might have occurred at the point where humans left Africa and went into Eurasia because it is found in every Eurasian population but it is not found in African populations. So in, in, in regards to blue eye haplotype 1, this individual actually does have heterozygous genotype here. Okay, 
Uh, it looks like he... Let's scroll. He has some light color variants in SLC 45A2, which is really surprising to me. Um, what about SLC 24A5? Nope, no derived variants in this variation of SLC 24A5, so it looks like he does not have the Eurasian light skin mutation in SLC 24A5. Uh, I think if I up uploaded this to YSEC um, Phenotype Predictor, they would draw him with very black skin. I'm not sure. You can test it out. The file, the download link in the, for the file will be in the description of the video, so you can test it out. I think YSEC would draw him with black skin. That's what I'm thinking. Um... He actually has some light skin variants in Kito G, which is very interesting. Um, but it's once again, it's a Eurasian thing, so it's not so surprising, to be honest. And he does not have any derived variants in MC1R, so it looks like he does not carry any of the ginger-related variants in MC1R. Yep. Okay. That was interesting to see. Uh, now let's go ahead and check his, his polygenic risk scores, what kind of illnesses he might have had. It looks like he has... Slightly above average score for schizophrenia. It looks like he's got a slightly above average score for type 2 diabetes, a below average score for Alzheimer's, a below average score for multiple sclerosis, two risk variants for breast cancer out of 24. Really good to see two risk variants for breast cancer out of 24 is really uh, below the uh, dangerous threshold, so it's really good to see. 14 risk variants for testicular cancer out of 24, not good to see. 14 out of 24 for testicular cancer is a little bit too much, so we're going to go ahead and check uh, what kind of genotypes he has that are relevant for testicular cancer. Uh, zero risk variance for celiac disease out of 12. Once again, really good to see. Uh, zero risk variance for GSS out of 18. Really good to see. Six for Crohn's disease out of 28, which is kind of bad. We're going to check that. Uh, we're going to go in, in the result and we're going to check what kind of uh, risk variance he has there. For Reifenstein syndrome, zero out of 26, which is really good to see, but we can't check what kind of variations um, and variance he has there because unfortunately I did not um, I did not code the app the way that it, it would show those kind of genotypes on the main screen. It would take too much space and it would weigh too much in terms of the, the size and it would be really unreadable, right? So that's why I didn't do it this way. Uh, for Parkinson's disease, five risk variants out of, out of 44, which is really high. But once again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that this is due to mistakes in genotyping and not due to actual um, risk variants for that because I don't, I can't really... Imagine, well, maybe it is, maybe it is actual risk variance, in, in which case this individual probably did have Parkinson's. But let's just be positive and assume that this is because of genotyping errors. Once again, we can't check because, uh, because I did not um, code this application in a way that it would display those variants on the screen for you. Uh, for mental health results, it looks like he's got heterozygous genotype in Komets Valmet variation and Warrior genotype in MAOA. So it looks like he's probably a little bit more Warrior than Warrior or overall because heterozygous in Komt and Warrior in MAOA. Uh, overall, that kind of adds up to Warrior genotype together. Uh, it looks like he's got AG genotype in TAC1. So definitely slightly decreased number of dopamine to receptor sites in the brain. Uh, some trouble with alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD. However, the advantage is that it's uh, reduced risk of schizophrenia, various other uh, issues. There's probably more negatives than positives, though, because the only negative is schizophrenia. Um, the, the only positive is schizophrenia risk being reduced, and schizophrenia is a super rare, rare condition. Whereas the negatives are something that's really common, such as Parkinson's, alcoholism, ADHD. So, uh, when it comes, it's probably a little bit more. Uh, negative than positive overall, I would say, this kind of a genotype. That's just my opinion. All right, it looks like he's got uh, TT here, which means he does not have long-form 5-HTTLPR. Very interesting to see. So he's got short-form 5-HTTLPR, just like most people. Um, for mental, we're going to skip that autism. I don't really care about autism. Um, we don't really care about that either. For lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. For the empathy gene, it looks like he's got two variants for higher levels of empathy. Really good to see. So he's not a sociopath. For diabetes, it looks like he um, probably does not have type 1 diabetes. All right, good to see. For hemochromatosis, he actually carries one copy of the H63D variant, but likely doesn't have hemochromatosis. That's kind of crazy. So this might be uh, one of the earliest carriers of the H63D variant for hemochromatosis. And what's uh, really... Uh, unusual is that I think there was another Cromanion from Sungir. I think it was Sungir 3 that I made a video on that also had uh, this allele in uh, HFE's his 63 ASP. So uh, it looks like this is not the first Cromanion. This is the second Cromanion I'm seeing with the hemochromatosis mutation. So maybe the Celtic curse has some kind of origin 
in Cro-Magnons because so far these are the earliest samples I see with this genotype. For Alzheimer's, it looks like no risk variance for Alzheimer's in APOE. Really good to see. We saw the, uh, the polygenic score for Alzheimer's, so we don't really care about that. Um, multiple sclerosis. It looks like he's got... <laughs> Uh, it looks like no risk variance in HLA, really, really good to see. Uh, this one common risk variant, but it's a common variant. It doesn't play much of a contribution. For cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like he's got lower risk of aneurysm. Um, let's see. Okay, he's got this gene type, which is to reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and reduce the risk of brain aneurysm and uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Really good to see. Okay, we're going to skip myopia. For miscellaneous section, no micro P. No micro-P here either. So these are the two, the two uh, variations that have to do with micro-P. I, I don't know if I can pronounce it because it's YouTube. But you can read what's on the screen, right? So it's he doesn't have um, micro-P variants in either of the two variations. Uh, better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. One fat gene variant in FTOs, RS9939609. Higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea. All right, so he's got one uh, variant in FTO that predisposes him to uh, being a little bit overweight. It looks like he's got one variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. This is kind of atypical. And what's interesting, it is maybe a coincidence, but the um, the raft variant here is actually most common in South Asians. Um, he's got this genotype in this variation of EDAR, which means likely no shovel shaped ancestors and not East Asian in ancestry. But he has this genotype in EDAR, which leads to uh, likely some East Asian facial traits, most likely not European ethnic background. This is crazy, actually. Uh, I might be the first in this video to point this out. This is crazy. So he actually had a genotype in EDAR that is very, very atypical for Europeans and very typical for East Asians. Uh, not in this variation, but in this variation, he had the genotype, which is really atypical for Europeans. So he might even had some East Asian facial traits. Very interesting to see. He's not an Asian flusher. Uh, lower odds of alcoholism and normal risk of esophageal cancer. We're going to skip drug response. It's just kind of boring. Uh, albinism and, and atypical traits. It looks like he's not a carrier of Melanesian blonde hair variants. He is not albino either, so he's not albino. Um, for familiar Mediterranean fever, he does not have any risk variants for that. For MTHFR, we're going to skip that. Cancers. Uh, we, we wanted to check on the testicular cancer stuff, right? So for testicular cancer... Uh, let's see, slightly higher risk of testicular cancer, common but increased risk of testicular cancer, increased risk of testicular cancer. It looks like all of the important variations for testicular cancer, he's got higher risk for that. So, uh, for testicular cancer, maybe not so good, his result. Okay, um, leukemia, it looks like he's got no NQO1 alleles, so that's really good to see. This is one of those important variations for leukemia. Uh, 1.7 times increased risk of acute leukemia. Uh, slightly higher rates of leukemia here as well, but overall it's kind of a typical normal normal result. I don't think he has a very very much increased odds for leukemia. I don't think so. Doesn't look this way. For rare diseases panel, it looks like he's a carrier of an allele for one Gerg's disease, which is really crazy. Uh, I think once again I can attribute this to faults in genotyping rather than rather than he's actually carrying an allele for that because it's really rare. Um. He is not a carrier of variants for Bloom syndrome, really good to see, and he's heterozygous here, which leads to higher risk for several autoimmune diseases, including Addis Addison's disease, which is kind of a typical genotype, so I'm not going to go ahead and attribute that to genotyping errors, but this right here, carrier of an allele for one Gerg's disease, I would definitely attribute this to genotyping errors. Um, <clears throat> okay, for celiac disease panel, it looks like he does not really have any risk variants for that, really good to see. For allergies panel, we're gonna skip that. I don't, I don't care about allergies. Uh, for androgen receptor gene panel, AR gene, it looks like he's got typical higher odds of boldness in this variation. By the way, this is one of those variations that not every DNA service looks for. For example, if you took it in my heritage test, my heritage does not look for this variation. If you took a 23andMe or ancestry, ancestry I know for sure will be will have this variation in there, but 23andMe I don't know about that one, uh, and it's. Like the most important gene, the most important genetic variation when it comes to uh, risk of hair loss and male pattern boldness. So it looks like for him, he's got higher odds of male pattern boldness. Uh, for Crohn's disease, he's got okay, good. So we we remember that he score he was scoring a lot of risk variants for that, and we wanted to make sure that none of them were important ones. 
So indeed, it looks like none of them are important ones. He does not have a high score, high risk score for Crohn's disease. Really good to see. For Canavan syndrome, no risk variance for that. For HIV and AIDS panel, he does not have those variations that protect from HIV. So, and it's typical. Most people don't. So, you know, it's just kind of a typical genotype. Uh, for muscular dystrophy, myopathies, it looks like he's got four risk variants for adrenal leukodystrophy out of 40 total. Once again, uh, I think back when this uh, sample was tested, it was a quite a long time ago. And maybe I'm thinking that the chip they were using to um, to do the DNA uh, DNA genotyping, I think the chip might have been a little bit bad. You know, there might have been some mistakes, some missed calls, and that's what I'm attributing stuff like this to. Uh, because four risk variants for adrenal leukodystrophy out of 40 total, uh, it's a male. If he had, if he really had four risk variants for that, he would have uh, the actual trait. He would have died at a very, at a very, um, very early point in his life. Because males who have adrenal leukodystrophy die before they're 20 usually. So I think in this case, it is definitely the result of faulty genotyping on their part. Uh, nothing more than that. Uh, same I can say for von Gerg's disease. Uh, it's probably due to faulty genotyping on their part. Well, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link uh, which is in the description of the video. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.